Free agency is coming up and the Hornets have some decisions to make. Let's talk about it. Hornets Hoops here for a new video. I make weekly Hornets content, so if you're into that stuff, definitely hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on, like, comment, share. Let's get into it. So in this video, I'm just going to go over all of the Hornets' uh, expiring contracts on this team, and I'm just going to give you my predictions and what and my thoughts on what the Hornets should do. So first, I'm going to start off Miles Bridges. He is RFA, me and the Hornets can match anything, so they do have some leverage on that side. And I think the Hornets should definitely bring him back. Uh, he was the leading scorer on this team, borderline all-star. Um, and they should just really show appreciation to the homegrown talent. It's not like Miles was some top five pick who was supposed to be some, stu some superstar coming in this league. He was the 12th overall pick. They traded him for SGA to get him. And he, he was a raw talent coming into this organization. He was able to really develop and improve his game into a borderline all-star. What I love paying Miles Bridges is the max. No, but it's way better than losing him for nothing. And I don't really know what the trade value, uh, the trade value is on the signed trade market. But I, I think it's his best. The Hornets need to do what they can to keep him here. I think he can definitely be all-star if he... Uh, expands his uh, level on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, we've seen some flashes of it, and we've also seen him say you know, he wants to be Defensive Player of the Year. So that gives me uh, um, high confidence that you know he will um, get better defensive end because he seems very driven. And also, this you know, if the Hornets were just really worried about cap space and Simon Bridges. Just try to trade Hayward. Much rather pay Miles Bridges thirty million than I would. Gordon Hayward, 30 million. Gordon Hayward, the Hornets simply don't need anymore. They've outgrown his need. Um, yeah, so bring Miles back, and I think they will, will because we saw Mitch Kupchak today in that press presser of Steve Clifford saying, you know, the Hornets love Miles and they'd love to have him back. I know some people are worried about the whole social media thing with him removing the Hornets from his bio and his friends caption. Like, I don't really think much of it. Uh, we see this happen sometimes. Nothing really comes out of it. And also, if he wants to go to the Pistons or someplace else and the Hornets still want to keep him, they can match that contract offer again. And he stays with the Hornets, so <laughs> he's kind of stuck here if the Hornets really want to keep him. Next player on this list is Cody Martin. Cody Martin was a player that showed a lot of improvement this past season. Uh, he showed improvement uh, with his percentage from the three. He shot 38% from three on the highest attempts of his career, even though... He started off shooting pretty hot and kind of cooled down towards the end of the year. Definitely was an improvement uh, for him, but the area that he showed the most improvement was the defensive end. Uh, he was one of the best defenders on the Hornets, if not the best. He averaged like 1.2 uh, steals per game. And another thing about Cody Martin that I think is really valuable to this team is this is energy and intensity. Uh, he plays with a lot of passion. I think that's a player that the Hornets need. Uh, you know, Cody Martin really goes out there to battle. He's a player that you know will really work hard, give it his all. I want the Hornets to bring him back, and I should, uh, and they should bring him back. This uh, on his defensive impact, something the Hornets do need, is defense, and Cody Martin is definitely good at that. All right, next player on the list is Jalen McDaniels. This morning we saw the Hornets exercise that team option for Jalen McDaniels. Uh, his team option is $1.9 million, which I think is a great deal for McDaniels. That's not that expensive at all. It's a pretty cheap deal. Jalen's a player that's shown a lot of improvement, especially on the defensive end of the floor. He's become a pretty good defender for this team. He also has developed a decent three-point shot. I know he is kind of inconsistent sometimes, but when he is playing really good basketball for this team, he's a pretty key contributor to this team. And I think it's a smart move. Scotty Lewis is also a restricted free agent. The uh, Hornets drafted him last year and sent him to a two-way contract. He spent most of the time in G the G League. He didn't really play that much for the Hornets. I believe he played in two games um, and some garbage time for the Hornets. But uh, Scotty Lewis does have some defensive potential. I think he averaged a bet over a steal per game in the G League, so that is something good. And I think the Hornets should bring him back. Uh, he might get, get some more run with the Hornets with Steve Clifford because we know Steve Clifford does value defensive players. And again, Sky Lewis has a lot of potential on that end, so 
Yeah, so I say bring him back, maybe sign him to another two-way contract, and see what he can do. Kobolka is another restricted free agent for the Hornets. The Hornets did sign him to a two-way contract last year. He finally came over to Charlotte. He was a draft and stash player for a while, but he spent the majority of his time in Greensboro. I uh, didn't really see him play that much with the Hornets except for two games. I believe Brego put him randomly in in that Philly game for like a minute or two, then just like took him out. Then he played in that last game of the season against Washington, I believe. But in the G League, I believe uh, he's a pretty good three-point shooter. Uh, if I remember right, he shot around 40, over 40% from the three. He also averaged 14 points per game. You know, the Hornets spring him. I don't think it would be bad if they spring him uh, back for another two-way contract. You know, you can never have too many good three-point shooters on your team because this league is so three-point heavy. Uh, let's talk about some of the UFAs the Hornets have. Uh, Montrez Harrell, the Hornets traded for him in the trade deadline. They only traded Ish Smith and Vernon Kerr. I thought that was a great deal for the Hornets. They got a good backup center for this team. Even though he is in that you know seven foot center who's just known for protecting the rim, I thought he did a pretty good job with the Hornets. Uh, even though uh, he was a backup, he didn't really play as much as I thought. You know, we even saw him get a DMP against the Heat. Uh, that was kind of weird. But I just really like the intensity and all that passion he brought to this team. You know, he's always you know hyped up. He's great at getting rebounds, uh, getting a and ones. He's also pretty decent uh, at the line. He shot around seventy one percent for the Hornets. Also liked uh, how he worked with Lamelo Ball on the pick, the pick and roll. Um, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if the Hornets decide to let him go. This is the whole cap space situation. And he has all that off-the-court stuff going on as well, so that could alter the Hornets' decision on whether or not they want to keep him. But they, I think they might have early bird rights, so who knows? They might try to keep him. I wouldn't mind bringing him back if it was on the right price, if it was the right price, and also would not be shocked if the Hornets decided to let him go. Thomas, we saw the Hornets not have a backup point guard after that trade from Montrez Harrell. They played. They gave Terry the backup point guard minutes, and that wasn't the best. I think he's more of a two. But they decided to bring Isaiah in for, I think, a couple 10-day contracts. Then they decided to sign him for the rest of the season. I know Isaiah Thomas, I really like that sign for the Hornets. Uh, I thought he brought a lot of good things to this team. Even though he's not a good defensive player, uh, the Hornets might want to go for a more defensive backup point guard. But... Also, not every player on your team to be good at defense. It's just reality. Um, even though the Hornets do need to improve in that area of the floor. But Isaiah Thomas brought a lot of leadership to this team. Uh, he seemed to really take LaMelo Ball under his wing. He seemed pretty high on LaMelo. He's always praising him. And he also seemed to be really respected by this, the locker room. Um, Isaiah Thomas knows what it's like to go through adversity. You know, he was the last player picked in his draft. Uh, he was also he's all then he was also an MVP candidate. Then he got injured and had to battle his way back to the league. And I think he showed that he is still a quality NBA player. Uh, you know, even if he was not, you know, uh, out there every night, I still think he made an impact for this team. He's also used a spark plug. Uh, the games like uh, the uh, Hornets had against the Wizards, we saw them struggle in that game a bit. Borrego put him in, and Isaiah Thomas, you know, this went off and really helped the Hornets win that game. So I wouldn't be mad if they brought him back on like a vet minimum deal. I think he did a pretty good job while he was here. Would you like the Hornets to bring these players back? Would you like the Hornets to let them go? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Also, subscribe, comment, share, do all that stuff, and I appreciate you for watching.